Cressy. Hi. How are you doing? I'm so excited to meet you. I can't even tell you. So, okay, so you're... Is Foy your real name? Your given name? Yeah. And where did it come from? Is it a family name? It was... Uh, no, uh, a guy that was very influential in my dad's life was a guy called Tommy Foy. Oh. Uh, yeah. So his name was Tommy Best Foy. Uh, so I got... I got oh, cool. Uh, I got Foy. I'm in Nashville right now. Oh, yeah. I, I bought a home here in February and came out to finish my album for a couple of weeks and then quarantine hit so we've been here ever since and i'm like oh my gosh it's been almost five months and you know we typically go back to our the show this is us that i'm on nbc and we don't know when we're going back to work so who knows um i mean it could be in a month it could be next year we don't know because of everything so Listen, i'm here <laughs> yeah. yeah nobody nobody mm-hmm. knows I know. So tell tell me this. Yeah. I'm, I'm forgive my ignorance here. I don't no, watch a I lot love of TV. It. I love it. I don't it. watch a lot of TV. That's okay. No. <laughs> but like, uh, is is it a musical show? Like, do because no, it's not necessarily a musical show. So it's, gosh, I mean, I guess I could give you an elevator. So pitch it is of, two different things. Like, the, you know, there's there's a there's the actress and there's the singer songwriter. Yeah. Well, the thing is that um, I didn't I didn't um, ever audition to be a singer on the show, but. My mother in the show, who Mandy Moore plays, who's obviously a singer and an artist for many, many years, um, they're like, oh, well, maybe we should have it that, you know, Kate sort of wants to follow in her mother's footsteps. And so I got a script once with, you know, an italicized um, song. And I was like, wait, wait, like, it's an italics, like, it's a song, like, you guys want me to sing? And they're like, yeah, but if you don't feel comfortable, don't worry, like, we'll just have somebody. Um, You're thinking, fuck yeah. I'm like, cool. I'm like, please. Let me sing. Like, I want to just give me a try. And um, because music was always my first love, but I was really petrified to ever really do it. And I don't know how you've ever felt. I don't know if maybe you just came out of the womb and you're like, I'm ready. But I <laughs> I was like, it was just not very encouraged or supported. And so I was always really afraid of it. And so interestingly enough, playing the character that is sort of an aspiring singer, but like, you know, making like house calls and like, not doing anything exciting as far as music goes because she's you know struggling mentally emotionally um it's helped me to feel better in my skin to want to then of course actually take the leap and Mm -hmm. and do my own music um because i and not for anybody else right but it's just for myself and that's even scarier because i'm like oh it's i'm not hiding behind a character this is just Mm -hmm. me and here's my heart and oh my god so um it, they've sort of informed each other, but um, luckily, yeah. I was just thinking know. that must have been uh, that must have been a good, uh, like a good uh, a good rule they've got. Oh yeah, you know, oh. to kind of sort of spur you on, like oh shit, hang on, if she's doing it, yeah. If my, you know, if my character in a show can do it, yeah. Why why I, can't I, I give it a go, I mean? yeah. and like give it a go because like my heart needed it, and I yeah. I've always just wanted to do it, and I always say this, but like ain't nobody want to sing shoulda coulda wouldas. You know, like, I'm just not interested. So, um, yeah, so here I am. I mean, I Diane Warren wrote a song um, that I sang for the end crawl title of a movie that I was in. And then, of course, it was nominated for an Oscar, and I got to sing at the Oscars, and I was like, what in the hell is going on with my life? And um, then luckily, you know, in the meantime, Cindy Mabe at Universal talked to me about um, what I ever want to, like, actually have a, a record deal. And I was like, you're talking to a big girl from a small town. Hell yes, I want a record deal. Like, what, are you kidding? Um, And I never thought that was going to be possible. But um, And then playing the ACMs with all the those lovely ladies and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I feel songwriting is one of the most magical things in the whole world to, like, have four hours in a room with maybe some strangers and maybe some friends, but to come out of it and have something that never existed four hours ago i think it is the most amazing thing and um the way that it all unfolds and just the creativity and it's just it's magical to me so it is wild isn't it magical is a good word actually yeah magical is a good word yeah that's what it feels like even 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 when you're you know even if even if you're the one that gets that line yeah (laughs) or the one that gets that turn it turn it for you know whatever it is yeah that little chord turn of the you know exactly wow where did that come from I know. Downloaded from the heavens. I know, because I'm like, who is that? Like, Yeah. 
are uploaded from the earth, you know. A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm giving it a go. Yeah. I'm giving it a go. Well, that, that's, well, that's it. That's all there is to it. So am yeah. I. Yeah. Well. You know what I mean? So, so are we all that, you know, I don't oh. expect uh, anyone to uh, like loathe love or hate you know my next record or anything i ever do i do it because it makes you know i'm on a journey and i'm really enjoying it <laughs> right right you know and that's I mean? the so, thing when you enjoy it other people yeah. enjoy it you know i think yeah. so much we do or at least for me well, some of them not yeah. all of them well as we as we find yeah <laughs> you, you, you need only go on the instagram for 20 minutes and you'll oh, find please. that out. please i'm like it doesn't mm. matter what you do what you don't do what you say what you mm. don't it's like and I get it. People feel very safe to talk all kind of smack, mm. you know, when you can't see them in their face. I'm like, would you say that to my face? Would you say that to my mm. face? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Mm. Um, I'm not confrontational at all, but I am a tough girl, and I will. Right. Yeah. Like, my mom, literally, I'll never forget, she would always say to me, <laughs> don't start a fight, Chrissy, but you can finish one. <laughs> 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 I'm like okay, I'm ready. All right. So I'm just you know put my dukes up, but um, I I can't engage with people who are hateful or just insensitive and mm. rude. On I can't. I, I imagine you to be songwriting at every single second of every day. Like you're in the kitchen and you're like thinking of a song. You're like that's taking kinda, your kids that's to school, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it gets in the way a lot. It gets Does in the way it? a lot. Aww. It does, yeah. But you know what? Not not much. Not much has changed. You know, uh, my daughter and I were looking through my old school reports a while back. Aww. When we come up here, we we're clearing out in in this room, and uh, and every last one of them just said, you know, could do better if you just stop daydreaming. You know, like if he just he, like you know he's a you know, smart enough kid, but just needs to focus a little bit more. You know, I just off. Oh, <laughs> oh i love that that's a song right there could be better if you yeah. could stop daydreaming like that's so yeah. i love that so much but like yeah, yeah i mean that uh, well school schmool whatever you know um i obviously it's very important for many reasons but i think it's more important to daydream and be imaginative oh listen and, people learn in different ways you know I'm exactly such a aesthetic learner you know yes. I, school and me didn't really yeah wasn't wasn't the best learning ground for me yeah uh yeah, but music was, and music has been, and has always been. You know what I mean? Do you Confident have siblings that are yeah. musicians? Okay. Uh, no, not not that are musicians. Oh. No. Oh, okay. No, uh, like two up from. I've got three older brothers. Oh. Uh, like Colin, he used to play the trumpet and a bit of the quad drum. We lived in America for a while, and he was in like the band, you know, playing the quad drums. You know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Where were you in America? Canton, Oklahoma. How'd you end up in Oklahoma? Uh, well, my dad was a pre- yeah right. Yeah. My dad, my dad was a preacher uh, for the Church of Christ. And, wow! Uh, he went out to America. He was uh, in had a church in Belfast, and and he went out to America, I think, to raise funds. Probably, I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and out when when he got out there, you know, they said you know there, there was a little this little town um, that they were looking to build a church in. Would he be interested in? Mm. You know, coming out and you know, and 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 being there and actually building it. He actually got involved in building it because he was handy that way. Wow! Uh, yeah, oh, my little special. town. I, I I visited there a while back um, with my wife and my daughter. My, my boys weren't born then, and you know, even thirty six years later, the town has grown exponentially. There's now six hundred and six hundred people there, I think now. So I can't wow. imagine what it would have been like in that. What was that? That would have been seventy five. We moved there. You know, wow. to go yeah. from to go from Belfast to you know red dirt and <laughs> hot sun. You yeah. Know, uh, oh yeah, it's hot. Must have been wild. Yeah. For my yeah. Know, for my mom, must must have been in, a, in a, just a teal spin. Yeah, I can't even imagine. So, do you think that you've gotten like your influence, uh, like gospel influence, or, or any of those from the oh, way that yeah, you were raised? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, very much so. But like when I say gospel, that to me is a very you know that's an that's an old word. Sure. Uh, you know what I mean? That's an old word. You know what yeah. I mean? It's uh, you know song songs that were you know songs of hope that were sung uh, by people who had no hope in sight. Yeah. That's gospel. You know that's yes. real. Go- that's real gospel. Not 
not not uh, and forgive me you this you've got Nashville fans so I'm sure I'm going to offend a lot of people <sighs> but it does weird it does weird me out that the you know the people write you know these Christian songs today you know the Jesus is my homeboy type thing and and then make a fortune off it you know you know if you believe in God which I, I don't uh, just to be clear but yeah uh, if you do uh, it seems it just seems odd to me that you know you could you know, leading people into the presence of God and then buying a swimming pool with it. You know what I mean? It feels a bit... That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. It's, it's, I think that when you can do anything, it's always about your intention behind it. Yeah. So, you know, you know the intention behind those songs, well, you know, when, you know, gospels, music that was written with no dream of anything other than the need to do it. And yes. the need to express, and the need to let it out. You know, the yeah. need to abandon yourself and give it, give it all up. Right, right. That kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I, that yeah. kind of gospel music had a huge impact on me. Do you know the premise of this show? Then was no. it? Was it? No. Well, the, so the vinyl supper is kind of like it's. Uh, I always think of it as like the final supper, but uh, right. Is that too morose for you? I don't know. Should we nah. just have it like a like a Friday night supper? I don't know. <laughs> nah. You um, keep to what you want. <laughs> a vinyl, a vinyl supper. So the idea is, you get it. You know, it's like something's happening. You know, the world is going to implode tomorrow. A, 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 you know, a cosmic Hoover is going to come and just <laughs> we're going to be gone. Right. And we all know about it. And we decide we're going to sit down. We're going to have a meal. And it's like, what what do you have for starter? What do you listen to while you're having that? And then you have a meal. And what do you listen to while you're having that? And then you have dessert. And what do you oh, listen to man. while you're having that? Okay, I'll go first. What, okay. what would I fancy for a start? If I was sitting down right now, changes every week, but there's some staples. You know what? Here's a staple that I could have morning, noon, or night. Pizza. Oh. Sardo base, preferably. Yeah. Um, nice and thin, but nice and crisp. Yeah. And just a, just a margarita classic, you know. Just yes. Tomato, buffalo mozzarella, a little bit of basil. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I maybe have, yeah, just one of one of the, one of those. I'd have those. I'd have one of those for a starter. Yeah. And if it wouldn't annoy everyone in Italy, I'd maybe put a wee bit of chili oil on top of it. Oh, yum! As long as as long as my final my, my final supper isn't being filmed, right? And broadcast in Italy, I think I'll be fine. You don't want to go down yeah. in, in infamy of putting chili oil on your pizza. No. <laughs> hey. No, do you know what I mean? That would be yeah. What did he put? Sacrilege. On what Sacrilege. on the margarita yeah <laughs> and i'm going to listen to uh i'm going to listen to the, what am i in the mood for you know what a better rand in human better rand in human um. i'd listen to uh maybe political science you know what i mean if, if the world's gonna ever gonna get you know sucked up by this co cosmic hoover yeah uh that would be a good that would be a good uh, like starter song i think yeah yeah i mean i i'm a huge fan of one of my dear friends makes an artichoke dip that is just it's so simple but it's so delicious that i feel like i gotta start with artichoke dip yeah it's so yeah. good i like i can eat the whole thing by myself and it just always makes me think of like a dinner party and yeah. but if i had like a song to choose it might be Uptight, Stevie Wonder. Um, How to say? I just love him. I just love him. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, would I go down the Motown route, or would I want to like, would I save Bob Marley till to the end? Right? If I'm going out, yeah, I, maybe I want right? to go out with Bob. <laughs> um, it's but, a tough yeah. one, isn't it? You know, if you, if we actually had to choose this, it'd be hard, this wouldn't is it? Tricky. <laughs> yes, I was like. He just threw me for a loop with this. Um, and I have to say, as American as it sounds, I do love a cheeseburger and french fries. Oh, hell. That's oh, my God. Or a good burrito. Oh. No, listen, I would, I, would, uh, I would hear you on that for a million, for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. You know what? Yesterday, my daughter turned 17, Ella. Oh, uh, happy birthday to we, her. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're kind of because we're sort of in lockdown, you know, she couldn't have a party with her mates or anything. So we went mm -hmm. camping, just her and I. And it was the best hang. It was such good crack. But th the point is, it really reminded me how good a burger is. Because we just, 
I just, you know, burger, just a, just a hamburger. Yeah. And then we had some sausages and, you know. Yeah. What, what more do you need than that when you're How sitting, sweet. You know, sitting out in the wild, the sound of the river going by, phone doesn't work. Yeah. You got a burger in your hand, your hands are dirty. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. That's a, that's a good burger. Yeah. Also, I think, you know, how often do we ever just sort of sit out and like enjoy what we're actually eating and actually taste it? Mm. Right? Like we're always in a hurry to do something else or like, oh, the next food's mm-hmm. coming or whatever. And, um, well, you know what? With that yeah. in mind, then let's not rush into our mains. Then I don't. Okay. Wanna, I don't I'm not going to pick a burger yet because we've only just had started. We're just getting to know each other here. Right. True. I'm kind it's of. Intri- I'm kind of intrigued to know one thing that you said earlier because you said uh, music was the first love, but then mm-hmm. you've fallen into the acting thing, and then you're yeah. in a show that's doing really well. And I'm just. It, I suppose I'm thinking. Well, how how come you had the confidence to go down this acting route that? That wasn't even really the, the the main drive. It sounds like like yeah. love or music was the real passion, right? Yeah. Well, well, how did you how did you have the guts to do that and not and not music? Y- you know, it's interesting. So I grew up in Gainesville, which is a small town in North Central Florida, and um, I was a Navy brat. So I lived in Japan for nine years, and I like never really felt like I belonged. Like I like oh, this is my home, or this place is my. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned to acclimate very quickly. You know, I went to five different elementary schools or lower grade school. I I don't know what you guys call it, but, um, like K through five. And so I had to always make new friends and make them Mm. quickly if I wanted to feel comfortable. And I was always really, really comfortable with being uncomfortable. I had a bit of a tumultuous childhood. My parents divorced and my mom remarried to my stepfather and, um, you know, it was tricky. It was a tricky time and situation. And then, my sister heard about an open call. And so we went to literally, it's like this little hotel in our town. And I was just going to take her as a guardian. And in my heart, I was like, Oh my God, this could be like my chance to get out of here. But like, I never really had the courage to ever like raise my hand and speak up. And so, Mm. um, there was a woman sitting across from me filling out paperwork and she's like, Oh, I taught at your high school. And I'm like, I, I, in what department? She's like, in theater. I was like, I wasn't in theater. So I, I was too afraid to be in theater. I'm just here with my sister. And she's like, I think you're here for a reason. And I'm like, okay, crazy lady, sure. And then I turn <laughs> around and I don't know, I don't see this woman ever again. I ask, I'm like, do you guys see the lady in the hat? Blah, blah, blah. People are like, no, we don't know. I'm like, what? So who knows if it was a guardian angel, if it was something that I made up, right, to like, soothe myself or to like give myself that vote of confidence I don't know but my sister comes out of the audition room with the manager at the time who was holding the call the open call and she's like what do you do and I'm like uh and at the time I was teaching preschool and I was always entertaining my family I was like the entertaining diplomat like trying to make everybody feel better and not feel any feelings or whatever it was um or maybe I wasn't trying to feel any feelings um (laughs) so um she's like well do you want to do you want to act or sing or anything and I was like "Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm." in my heart I was like get me out get me out get me out but I yeah but I just was too afraid to say anything and my sister's like you sing you yes you do and I'm anyway lo and behold I end up auditioning for her and she's like what are you doing here and I'm like fair play to you What's that? What made you? What made you? What made fair play to you? It yeah. means like, well, like, well, like you know, yeah. good on you. Oh, oh, good, oh, on, good you. on you. Okay, yeah, okay. Cute. Yeah, like yeah. good on you for like, like for like. What, what do you think flicked that switch then? That you just that you did decide to go. I let it. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to sing, even though I didn't come here for that. That's quite a. Yeah, I think because like in my heart I was like, I want to like at least try, and I didn't think that I would always be in in Gainesville. And not because I thought I was too good or any of that. It's just that yeah. I thought I had a different path. And so then with this woman who I never saw again, who was like, I think you're here for a reason. And then the lady, you know, who I became my manager very shortly after said, I think, are you, are you sure you don't want to sing or act or anything? And then my sister sort of nudging me. And it's like, you know, we all need somebody to believe in us until we believe in ourselves, or at least for me. And um, I think it was just sort of like a culmination of desperation and like interest and like, just a pure love for music. Um, I didn't know where the heck it was going, but I was like, I, I can't, I can't stay here forever. 
Um, and I don't know really where that came from aside from my maybe intuition, my soul, my spirit. I don't know. But, um, I then ended up going out to do a showcase, found an agent and then moved out to LA with six girls in a two bedroom apartment with air mattresses. What? And I was basically taking people on auditions um, working for my manager because I didn't have many auditions and I wasn't. And what what age are you at this, st- at this stage? Uh, I Christine? was twenty one. Right. Yeah, twenty one. Wild. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And um, you know, like I was footing my own bill and I had to, to have a job to stay out there. Everybody else was sort of all their parents were paying for their room and board, mm-hmm. and my parents could never afford Wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be lovely? Yeah, I know. What Wouldn't is that? Wouldn't be lovely? <laughs> Golly. So um, I ended up staying out there and just trying to make ends meet in odd jobs. And then my agent said, oh, I need an assistant. So I became her assistant for nine years. And then I became my own agent. And so I took this massive detour of like, okay, uh, (laughs) all right, I guess I'm going to learn the business behind the desk. But like, I, I was like, maybe the universe is trying to tell me that like, maybe this isn't for me. Or maybe I'm supposed to help people and not necessarily be in front of the camera. Or, you know, but when I started getting into the acting thing, it was, I think my manager just was like, yeah, why don't we stick to comedy? Let's stick to TV, you know, film. And I don't know why that was. I don't know if she didn't think that I had the chops to sing. I don't know if she was um, living vicariously through me. I don't know Mm. what it was necessarily, but um, it did really sort of diminish that light that I had. You know, but then to, again, you had another moment where you thought, fuck it, I'm going to change this, and you became your own agent then? And, and then I became my, my agent's assistant and I became an agent. And then, But then all of that got, like, all, even the acting got pushed to the side because I was focusing on my own clients. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is not what I came to Los Angeles for, you know, like nine years. And, um, but then uh, a producer that I'm very friendly with, um, a close friend of mine, said, you have to learn to carry a crown before you can wear one. And I was like, oh, that's what all that was. All that incredible experience and everything that happened for me and not to me and, um, you know, I I can't, I I don't even understand how my life is on paper. It doesn't make sense. Like I didn't get to go to an art school. I didn't come from a, you know, family that could support me and encourage me and, I just think the universe is working, you know. I think it always works on our behalf, you know, if we choose to to see it and that's... Go that um, way, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Behind every little modicum of success, there's always a graft story, just a hard work story, you know, someone that just didn't let loose, someone that didn't give up, just worked harder than everyone else, you know, adapted, changed, moved to LA, you know, know, started working for the agent, ah, fuck it, I have no, you know... Like, mm-hmm. just no ego in it. Like we just need yeah. to get the thing done and move on mm-hmm. and get going. Yeah, no yeah. ego in it. That's a, that's a key. You literally have to put that aside. Yeah. Literally. I mean, I've seen, you know, ego kill a lot of people's talent. Mm. And I, I, never, I, I never thought that I was, like, uber talented. I was just like, let me get out of my own damn way. Like, mm. please, please let me get out of my own way. Because... Um, if it was my ego's time, I would have been wildly famous and successful 20 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. But that wouldn't have been good. That wouldn't have been right for me, you know. So, sounds like yeah. you were successful enough. Can, you know, yeah. look at um, the, the well, the, you know, the origins of the story, and you know, I always felt like that. You know, the coming up, people going, "Oh, you should be doing this, and you should be on the radio, and you should be doing the other, and you should be." Uh, I say, yeah, maybe I should be, but like, I'm enjoying this. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying writing. I'm enjoying the, I'm enjoying the going and gigging. Uh, well, I was then anyway. I'm not not yeah. so fond of touring anymore, but yeah. um, <laughs> you know. But then I really kind of, I don't know. I, I I always used to say this. I'm already successful. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm covering all my bills. All my bills are covered at home, and then some. You know, enough money for a you know a bottle of wine at the weekend or whatever. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'd have bought a bottle of wine probably every night, I would have thought, at, once, at one point. <laughs> uh, but you know, like that's, you know, what is your definition of success? Yeah, right. Uh, I, th- I think our definition of success has been so skewed by, you know, this external 
media bacon, you know, this kind of... Oh, yeah. Just kind of uh, try and tell you what you're meant to be and what you're meant to think and what it's meant to, you know, oh, success is being rich and powerful. And it's like, fuck, no. No. Why is, why is that the only, uh, the yeah. only definition of success? I know. I know some uh, very successful poets. Right. Very successful uh, stone wall builders. Right. Know, live right. Pretty local. <laughs> right. Right. You know. I was like, wait, when's your birthday? What sign are you? Guess. I, mm, God, that's a hard guess. Um, I'm thinking what sparked the question. I just, um, I always like to know. Even when I was an agent, I'd always ask people what signs they were. I'm a, I like really am into astrology and stuff. Yeah. Um, I would want to say Virgo, but I don't think that that's right. You, no. I'm waiting for you to say. We, are you saying Virgo or are you not? This is an I, Americanism that I'm not uh, that I can never get my head around. You know, I want to say I want to say Virgo. I'm thinking, do you want to say Virgo or <laughs> are you saying Virgo? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, okay. you know, do you know where? Do you know where that? Do you know where that shop is? That coffee shop? I want to say it's down the block down there. Uh, uh, I want to say two, three lefts. You know, go, well, you know what that means? No, it means yeah. like I'm not sure, but that's what I want to yeah. say. But in the event that yeah. I'm wrong, my ego needs to. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's yeah. like I don't want to be wrong. So okay, uh, well, don't, don't don't. Never mind. But if you want to say it, say it. You want to say Virgo? or You want to say a different one? I'll say Virgo because it came to mind first, but it doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm Scorpio. Oh, <gasps> you are? Wait, when, what yeah. day is your birthday? 18th of November. A Scorpio. Uh-huh. Yeah. This is that is good or bad? Interesting. Um, no, I think that Scorpios, want, from what I know. That now? Are you going to start reading? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, no, I'm not saying I know anything. I'm not a drop in the bucket, but like, yeah. as Scorpios are very um, passionate. Um, they can be not territorial. But um, I do pee outside a lot. <laughs> Perfect. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but no, it's, some, it's fascinating. Ahead. Astrology is fascinating. Yeah, no, it is. I know it's not. Yeah. It's not horoscopes. Not that nonsense. Not that yes. you know. Next week, next week you're gonna come into money, or you yeah. might not. Uh, but money's gonna be involved, and you're gonna meet somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you, you might talk to a human. Would, yeah. <laughs> yes. You know. It's, yeah. Just no, it's funny, the charts funny. of like where everything was aligned at the time you were born and all that. And where yeah, were course, you born listen, in Belfast? I was born in Bangor, Bangor oh. County Down. Yeah. Where's where's that from where you're at now? A, about thir- well, it's about thirteen mile outside Belfast, but I'm oh. in Scotland at the minute. I'm living in Scotland in, Aber- oh, in Aberfeldy. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. And yeah. did you move to Scotland for a particular reason? Do you know what? I moved to Scotland because I've been living in London uh for about seven years. Um, yeah, I was living in London for seven years and I, I just didn't really, I loved London, the city. It's a great city, but to live in it, it was just, you know, like being in a washing machine a little bit, you know, cause I would have to go on the road to, you know, to mm. try and take every gig I could get to try and pay for this London dream that I couldn't afford, you know, and it yeah. just kinda, I was working harder and and getting, you know, not getting as far uh, and, and getting more and more in debt and not being able to kind of carve out a path, you know, and I was thinking, I, I, whatever I was, 36, 37 or whatever at the time, was thinking like, like, fuck this. I need a bit more, I need a bit more clarity. I need yeah. a bit more clarity. I can't just go around in this washing machine all the time, just yeah. doing things that need doing. I need right. time to sit down and, you know, because for me to write, I need a lot of silence. I need a lot of space and quiet and to be left alone. Right. For a while. Yeah. Um, and I, I got a, I got offered a gig up here uh, to come up and stay. You know, they say, we'll put you up in this little tower and you do a little gig in the local gallery. And my wife at the time was, you know, it was actually her show. She was asked to come up and put her work up. And then when they heard that I sang, it was like, you know, bring him too. And he, you know, he can sing mm. and we'll put, we'll put you up in the tower or whatever. Um, the white tower, incredible spot. Uh, mm. So I come up to Aberfeldy from London um, and come over the hill from Creef and just Aberfeldy's in a valley and it was in its autumnal glory, you know, just reds mm. and gold and, and burgundies and, and the smoke coming out of the chimneys. And before I'd, before I'd even set foot in the town, I'd fallen in love, you know, I was like, 
it was like driving into Narnia or right. or, 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 you, or the Shireling, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Hobbiton. Oh, it was no. just so, um, yeah, it was so overwhelming. I, I, I remember saying in the van going, I could live here. Yeah. I could live here. And then we spent about three, four days here. And I left saying, I'm moving here. I'm, I'm, I'm moving here. It took me, took me, I think, a year and a half and a broken marriage, but I got here. <laughs> Listen, sometimes things, you know, happen the yeah. way that they do, you know, but yeah. you have to. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. not forget about dinner. Oh, what yes. Is, what dinner. are we going to have for dinner? dinner yeah, now, dinner, now, dinner, now, dinner, you, now dinner. you know the rules of the. Uh, yes. Or the concept of the final supper. Uh, what? Well, I feel yeah. like if. I mean, my gosh. I love Mexican and I love Italian food. But I also love Greek food, Lebanese, Persian. I mean, th- just this good food. Just good food. Do you this know what is, mean? yeah, this is a really hard question for me. Is, I probably would have a smorgasbord of just listen. If we're going out, we're gonna go out with the bang. I'm yeah. eating every single thing and anything the hell that I I wanted to eat and want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm literally gonna have cheeseburgers, yeah. French fries. Kebabs, rice, tzatziki, like all the things, all oh, the yeah. things, all the things. I, I, I couldn't yeah. choose. And Do you know um, what? Anderson yeah. East was quite the same, actually. He had oh, really? oysters. He had oysters and a Big Mac, and so I can't remember what else he had. Yeah. Okay, good. I don't uh, see. I think, you know, it's a. Uh, if it did, wouldn't matter of what you're eating and how much of it you're eating. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, give me a full on spread of everything. Yeah. That's terrible for the me. The Hoover's coming. Yeah. <laughs> if it's coming, I'm going down. The Hoover down. of God. God's cleaning up. He's going, <laughs> let's get rid of that one. They're making a fucking shit storm down there. And like, I'd want to listen to something maybe very, um, like, I think I should listen to something classical. Like, I love Peter Gregson, who is an incredible composer. Um, but I don't know. I might be like, want to party and listen to some like... I don't know, some 90s like hip-hop. I don't know, that sounds like good food. When good food like that comes, I mean, my mouth's already watering to thought of that cheeseburger <laughs> and the fries, you know. Yes. And tzatziki, tzatziki for the I, chips, you know, your fries. Oh, you know. oh Come my on. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And maybe so a wee good. milkshake there for the fries. Too. Oh, for the fries too. Yeah. Milk, milkshake and fries is good. Uh, nah, you want to be just, yeah, classical. I can see that. I can do you know, that. Like I feel like I, and the, he, he's just a beautiful composer. Um, Party with dessert. Do you know what? I think uh, I was sort of feeling tapas. <gasps> okay. But, yeah, do you know what? I am going to go tapas, actually. I am going to go tapas. I'm going to have, uh, you know, papas are you galas. You know, the, the, the salty spud, the salty potatoes with the salsa verde and the salsa rock oh. little dips and some of that chorizo oh. uh, and the red wine. It's all reduced and the uh, the gambas, pil pil or alajillo, whatever they are, you know, the little Come the ones that sizzle and they come out, you know, they lift the plate yeah. off and they're sizzling. You dip the bread in and into all that. Oh, um, yeah. Do you know what? That <laughs> and maybe, uh, is it, was it called? There's one called, is it Estefado or something? I think it's like a stew, like a, it's incredible. I would probably that, like a, a, sh- a smorgasbord. That's my version of a smorgasbord yeah. for my dinner. I would listen, what would I listen to while I was eating that? I would listen to uh, Every Which Way But Loose. You ever seen that movie? No. And there's a song in it uh, that I believe Charlie Rich, was it Charlie Rich or Pr- Charlie Pride? Charlie Rich, I think, sang it. Um, I wake you up when I get home. You won't mind what time it is. You don't know that song? No. I've been gone for much too long. No, I don't. I'm your man and you're my woman. I wake you up. When I get home. Oh wait, I think I do know that song. Also, I'm so excited that you sang. This is like has <laughs> made this has made my day. I'm like, please, 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 please sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's man. a killer. It, it's a killer. I always kind of judge people. I'm like, do you like Bob Marley? And if they're like, eh, I'm like, mm, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah. We're not yeah. on the same page, boo boo. <laughs> yeah. No, I had, but, a, I had a huge phase, huge phase with him for sure. Yeah, you know, like yeah. most songwriters do. You know, yeah. yeah. I I did a, a project in school in middle school. Everybody else was choosing like athletes and you know, uh, 
very famous rich people. And I chose Bob Marley and everyone's like, Chrissy, are you on drugs? My my parents, they're like, Chrissy, um, are you doing drugs? I'm like, I'm like Rastafari. I'm like, no, yeah. no. You go, fuck, like, I wish. I know. Yeah. Give me, give me that one. No, I am. Um, yeah. It was very funny. I'm like, no. Like, it's not all about just smoking weed. It's so funny, like, people's perceptions mm-hmm. of what oh, they don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. So they silly. Just, you, yeah, no, his, his uh, lyrics, his, his word, his intent, you know, like yes. it, was, uh, yes. it was articulate. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, I, I'm loath to call them lyrics because they're just the flow of something for him, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. It wasn't like he was sitting crafting a song in the way right. people do now, you know what I mean, to try and get the whatever right fucking nothing to do with that we're back to gospel there we're back to the right. reality back to the you know the blood and guts of it right he's the one on the ring and it's just getting all just there can't be any just uh anything that doesn't belong to there in that space yeah. can't be there because he's he had one vision right one kind of yeah oh yeah he was inc- he's an incredible man incredible inspiration to me too yeah, but still, I'm not going to pick him because if we're going to be, we're sort of here together. This Hoover's coming, we're there oh, that's together. True. And I, that's I might, true. I might rip, I might dip over and pick on some of your fries and whatnot. Yeah, uh, uh, and I'll so I get to hear all these songs as you're playing them. So that's, that's okay. right, right. Uh, so what am I going to have for dessert? Um, <laughs> what am I going to have for dessert? Uh, you had a nice warm cookie. That kind of maybe something. I had tapas, didn't I? Hmm. Hmm. You're very thoughtful, very um, pensive. Yeah, well, it's, it's important. This is important. It's, it you is. know what I mean? It's the, it's it be is. the last thing I ever eat before the Hoover comes. Right. And now I'm thinking, have I made terrible decisions? <laughs> this is <laughs> no, the story what? of my life, though. I second listen, guess everything. <laughs> listen, a chocolate, a chocolate chip cookie, listening to One Love by Bob Marley. What? Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Thank you for that. That's a, that's a great way to go. Yeah. I think I'm going to have. I'm just going to have coconut ice cream, actually, and lots and lots of it, but like the freshest coconut ice cream, not just, yes. not just kind of, you know, like the, you know, the, the cheap corner shop, down yeah. at the bottom <laughs> coconut ice cream with coconut flavoring. Right. You know what I mean? Just a big spray of <laughs> coconut <laughs> flavoring in there. Not that kind of coconut ice cream, like, but, kinda like a coconut sorbet, you know, that sort yes. of just melts in your mouth. Yes. And, but doesn't, but doesn't melt until, until I want it to, because I do like it when it melts a little bit, but I don't want to. I want to eat a lot of this shit, so I, right. mean, I, want, I want it to melt when it, the bowl gets to about there, and then right. it can start melting, and then you can do the mix-in bit at the right. end. Right, so you can do this, the, mm-hmm. And do you mm-hmm. have anything on top of this? Lime, and I'm not going to pick Harry Nilsson lime in the coconut. I've picked that, I, I picked that already. Uh, but I do love lime, it's just oh, incredible. Cute. Maybe that's why I wrote the song. I would just squeeze a bit of lime over that once in a while, yeah. Oh, I've never um, had that. Mm. I mean, I've never had the kind. I've never had the one that's in my head either. Right. <laughs> but I want that. But I really want to. <laughs> it looks incredible. You manifest it. It'll, it yeah. will happen. I imagine um, it's going to taste incredible. Yeah. When Hoover comes. <laughs> um, and what would I listen to on the way out? You know what? I would listen to uh, Bill Withers. Grandma's hands, but the version from live at uh, Carnegie Hall or Carnegie Hall, you know. Mm, I haven't heard the live. Uh, that's the one where he gives the intro, you know, about going to church with his grandma. Oh, you know. I haven't heard. I'm going to look that up. Oh, listen to that immediately. Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, the the, um, the whole the whole album is incredible. I mean, that man is incredible. Yes. Um, yes, he was. Uh, yeah, the intro to that is fucking hilarious too it's genius and so sweet it's uh it's everything it's everything you want bill weathers to be right there he, there you go he is that yes he is this fucking cool actually yeah you know he is this yeah he is this guy uh, and, so i listen to that why that song is did you have a a relationship with a grandmother or a I did, yeah. Both my yeah. grandmothers, both my grandmothers were uh, very sweet to me. Yeah, I've got very fond memories of, of both of them, yeah. and also, uh, you know, that was often it often involved ice cream. You know, if we'd be going down to Malai, uh, like which is this sort of seaside town, there was a little shop there we'd always get ice cream from. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Oh, and cute. yeah, yeah, this, this, the sentiment, the sentiment of that. Uh, listen, if there, I, I love the idea of a heaven. It'd be great, and the, if the, my granny was there, it'd be that'd be even better. So, uh, if I could just even um, pretend for a minute while I'm listening to that, that she'd be up there shaking <laughs> a tambourine. Although my granny didn't shake a tambourine, she sang, she sang Did a she? lark, like a like a lark. Yeah, beautiful voice. Oh, I yeah. love that. And insisted on it all the time. Yeah. She, yeah, she embarrassed a shit out of my eldest brother Easton. He, oh. he was having a, he was having a housewarming party with all his mates. They were maybe be twenty three, twenty four, something like that. Maybe a little older. There's loads of them. They're all drinking. And before my, my granny went there just to say hello and wish, pay her wishes, and Easton was like, "Oh, this is lovely." Introducing to everyone, and they're all sort of on their best behaviour while Granny's there, sort of waiting for her to go so they can get back to drinking. But then she says, "No, I can't leave without giving a song." So she had to get up on the stairs and sing to them all, you know, like a welcoming gift for uh, for you moving into this house. It's not beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I'm sure he was yeah, mortified. He was mortified. He was yes. going, fuck's sake. Can you get out so we can drunk? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, dad duties. Do you love being a dad? Yeah. 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 I mean, listen, is it, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's not easy. Yeah. It's tough enough. It's tough yeah. enough. Yeah. But, um, but definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah. One of my friends definitely said that having a, a baby is like, Li- having your heart live outside of your body. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, don't know That's if I funny. want I kids. Des- I, described it, I described it the other week as having your heart kicked and massaged daily. <laughs> Just, and that too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, schmuck. Oh. Yeah, I think that's probably like that. more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. It can, it can be. It can be when you're a creative and you're a daydreamer and you want to get, you want your head to go off, you know, like, like we do. Yeah. You know, it's hard to, you know, cause it's such, it's about a regime and that me saying this makes it sound like I've got that regime down. I sh- I'm talking to myself here. That's a regime I need to get. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's a real struggle. It's a struggle all the time to try and, yeah. try and make it, you know, balance, uh, art and, uh, and the art of home, you know? Yeah. Everything is balanced. <sighs> fuck's sake I know for fuck's why can't sake. we just have a bit of imbalance for I know. once I know it's funny I was I was married to a, um, a man who was from Sheffield and his parents obviously were from York well not obviously but they were from Yorkshire and so it's so funny because sometimes when I have to really hear like listen to what I mean obviously your accents are very different but um, yeah. when we were thinking when we were talking about food I remember when they first came over and they were like cheese on a beef burger and they couldn't wrap their head around a cheeseburger and i was like it's my favorite thing i'm like please try it and they're like nah not for me love nah and um cheese cheese on a beef burger yeah. <laughs> so good but i love accents so it's just been fascinating to yeah hear, they are to fascinating you. you're good at them you, you've clearly got the, the singers they say singers do have a tendency to pick up uh, accents a little easier. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't. I mean, listen, I don't know I'm why not, I keep pointing at my ear like that's going to describe it. Look, because that's, <laughs> that's going to show ear. you. There's that's, what I'm talking about there. It's where the sound comes in. <laughs> Let me show you a second. Listen, listen to this. You get it? <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I got it now. But yeah, I mean, I just. I've actually never even been to the UK, which is a travesty. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so I got some things to do whenever we can get to doing them again, but... Well, listen, yeah. if, as, and when that happens, depending on what happens in the world, whether yes. we get hoovered up or, or uh, blown <laughs> apart, um, Golly. If, ever you're, if ever you're here, if ever you're here, you have a, you have a place to stay. Uh, oh, thank you. Know, you. you know, holler at me. Oh, but as for now, be I better awesome. go and put I better go and put this yes. boy in the bath and then get yes. him to bed. Yes. Chrissy, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Oh, thank you. It's really we'll, been a pleasure. And if I'm if ever I'm back in Nashville, I'll holler at you too. Yes, yeah, please. Sure. I would love that. Yeah, I would cool. love that. Or LA because I'm going back and forth. So you got a place to stay either way, either place. Sounds like a dream. Yeah. LA come on. Or Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. 